Many of the people who follow my art have been asking me to show them how to paint a flamboyant tree the way I do it, uh, my style. So I've decided to do just that today. Today I will show you the easiest way possible to do such a flamboyant tree. Now you can use a fan brush, you can use a flat brush, however I'm going to use, you might say a flat brush, but a inexpensive flat brush to show you exactly how to go about it. So I do hope that you enjoy this presentation. But first I'm going to go ahead and do a, a quick background before we do the flamboyant. So do not feel that you have to do this background in order to learn how to do the flamboyant. That's all, it's entirely up to you. using an angle brush to create the trunk of the flamboyant tree. Now what you need to keep in mind is that the trunk is normally very short when it comes to a flamboyant tree. So I start with the angle brush going light on top and then squeezing a little hard as I get to the bottom. Light and then squeeze harder when I get to the bottom. Just adding different uh, parts of the trunk here. Gonna make it a little wider. I just go ahead and I'm using uh, either black or very dark green for the trunk. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add white on the left side because that's where the sun or some of the sun will be coming from. And you usually in a flamboyant tree, you do see more of that white reflection on the tree and the branches that I will be creating soon. Now we're going to go ahead and clean the brush and blend the two colors together, the black and the white. I blend by tapping. Now you can see it's a short trunk. Okay, we're going to go ahead now and use a liner to do the thinner branches. And I'm using a light gray so that it can be seen. Now keep in mind also that when you're doing the flamboyant, it's almost the same the flamboyant tree itself almost the same length as the trunk and it's it's almost a formative umbrella so you'll you know I'll be sh trying to create an umbrella look well you don't want it to be exactly an umbrella but you get the idea and yeah, I find that it helps to create the branches first with the liner as I am doing here And the branches usually are pretty long. They extend out quite a bit. And that also explains why I placed the trunk where I did.
Now you'll also notice that as I'm doing the branches, I turn, I keep in mind the umbrella idea in mind so that I do tend to fold the branches either to the right or to the left and in the center I make them short so they still maintain that umbrella look. Since I'm using acrylic, what I do in order to make it easier to do the branches with the liner is to make sure that the the paint is uh, liquidated. I make it into a, <laughs> if that's the word. I put the uh, some water into the paint so that it becomes very very soft and easier to apply with the liner. In this case, I'll probably make the right side a little longer than the left side when it comes to the branches. Take your time when you're adding the branches. It's best not to rush. The more branches, the better. Because it is a fact that the flamboyant tree does have a lot of branches. In the umbrella form, notice almost the shape of the umbrella. Not exactly like an umbrella, but that gives you an idea of how to go about painting it. You want to make sure that the branches on top are short. Umbrella look again. Keep that in mind at all times. Now I have to choose what brush I'm going to use, uh, the flat brush. Now here, because this is a 12 by 16 canvas, 
I'm going to use a one inch brush. If I have a bigger canvas, I might use the one and a half brush or a two inch brush. And that does simplify the approach. Size of the brush based on the size of the canvas. Because the, back, the green in the background is very dark, I'm using a lighter green, much lighter green for the leaves of the tree. Now notice that when I apply it, I tend to angle it from back and forth. Watch my hands to see how I angle the brush. Right and to the right and then to the left. Right, right and then to the left. Keeping the umbrella look on mine. So now I'm applying the illusion of leaves, green leaves. Now a lot of these leaves, how much, how many of those leaves will show up at the end depends on how many flamboyant red colors you apply, as you will see as I go along. But right now I'm just focusing on adding the green leaves by tapping very softly. Now remember not to apply it in, an, in a straight or flat, but you angle it. There you go, like that. And you apply it in different places. Once in a while you let the greens touch, but not all the time. Uh, if you look at some of my paintings, you'll notice that not all the flamboyants look the same. Some are loaded with the red flowers and some have very few flowers. And therefore more green will show. If you're using oil paint, it works the same way. The only difference is that you would do the background at the end. With acrylic, it's very easy to do the background first. If you're using oil, you can start the background with acrylic and then finish it with oil. Now I'm darkening some of the green to create the sh the uh, shadow, the um, the darkness underneath because of the sun. The sun is not hitting the bottom of the tree, so therefore the the leaves in the bottom will be darker. Again, tap it. You tap the same way that you tap with the light green. Once you finish with the green, you clean your one inch brush again, flat brush, and you can then use it for the next layer. Now that it's clean, I apply dark, a little dark red. Now we notice that the, 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 the red that I'm using is dark. And there's a reason for that. And again, you tap, you tap almost in a concave. Yeah, there you go, like this. Yeah, see? And you apply it. One, like I said before, once in a while you let them touch. You let the red touch. But you apply it as you look at the branches.
Once you finish with the dark red, the next step is to apply another layer, which will be you, which you create with the red, adding yellow to it to create a lighter, a much lighter red. And you apply that red very lightly around that dark red, as you will, as I will demonstrate. See how much lighter this is? You apply a lighter red so that some of that dark red will continue to show. That gives it a, a, 3D, a 3D effect. This is when you start getting a really nice look on the flamboyant by adding the light red. And remember, you create the light red by adding yellow. Do not add white or you're going to end up creating a pink. You do not want pink. Notice how I have maintained the um, umbrella look. You don't want to deviate from that. You want to keep that umbrella look at all times. As you get more experience, then you can change the look somewhat. Do keep in mind though that some flamboyant trees do have long trunks, long thin trunks. See how nice it looks? We're not finished yet. There's still other layers that we're going to apply. The, fla the uh, flamboyant flowers have some yellow in them, sometimes a tiny bit of white to reflect it, but mostly Will be a little bit of yellow very rare and I'm gonna be tapping some yellow very very lightly if I overdo it then I just go back and add a little more red very easy to fix with uh, acrylic now uh, notice I'm noted I'm using a, the tip to apply the yellow I'm just applying it with a, the either the right side the right tip or the left tip of the brush very very lightly you don't want to put too much yellow, like I indicated, very little yellow. Just tap lightly.
I'm not too crazy about, about this branch here on the right. So I will work on fixing it a little bit by adding a little more land in the background. As you will see soon. I put too much yellow, so I'm now putting back some of the red over some of that yellow to decrease the amount of yellow showing. I just want a little bit of sparkle of yellow, not much more. Now I'm adding some dark green again in the bottom to create a 3D perspective. Time to fix this right branch. I'm adding some green here. To improve this branch. As you can see the acrylic paint is very forgiving so it's very easy to make adjustments. Using dark green and a one inch brush I'm tapping to create the shadow that's created by the lack of sun underneath the tree. The tree cover encompasses quite a big area, so I created a large shadow underneath the tree. Just keep tapping, tap, tap, tap to create the impression of darker grass underneath the tree. Now you want to tap some red in the floor and, and the same technique just because a lot of the, those flowers from the flamboyant tree will fall on the floor. So you want to add some red. First start with the dark red and then you tap a little bit of the lighter red that you have created by adding yellow. Mix the red and the yellow and that will give you a nice brighter red. I've added a little more of light green to break up some of the shadow. You 
Yeah, I'm increasing the amount of light that's hitting the trunk by adding a little more light, very, very light gray. And then go ahead and tap as I did before to blend it in. Adding a little lighter green in the background to show some of that reflection of the sun. Always step back and take a look at your work to see if you're satisfied with how it looks. This is a time when you can add some details. You can either add more branches or improve the background a little bit. Always leave those details for last. Okay, so now I'm satisfied with the way it looks. I got the umbrella look and short trunk the highlights of the sun. I'm happy now so I think I will consider this a finished product.